Hello, everyone, and thank you too for joining us today. I'm Chris Campen, and I will be your host for this NASA Technology Transfer Program webinar on in-situ defect detection in composites during cure. Our presenter today is Dr. Tyler Hudson. Dr. Tyler Hudson joined the Advanced Materials and Processing Branch as a Materials Research Engineer in March of 2018. He began his research at NASA Langley Research Center in May of 2014 as a graduate research assistant with the National Institute of Aerospace. His research has focused on manufacturing and process monitoring of advanced aerospace composite structures. He has made significant technical contributions to NASA projects within the Aeronautics Research Mission Directorate and Space Technology Mission Directorate. Dr. Hudson has authored four pre published to date, peer reviewed journal papers, all his first author, and 11 conference proceeding papers. In addition, he is the first inventor on three non-provisional patent applications filed at the USPTO, and a co-inventor on a fourth technology where the new technology report has been submitted to NASA's Technology Transfer Office. Dr. Hudson recently received the AIAA Campton Road Section 2020 Robert A. Mitchell Tree Young Engineer of the Year Award. NENSA, Peninsula Engineers Council 2020 Doug Enter Young Engineer of the Year Award and a NASA Early Career Achievement Medal. At this point, I'm going to hand it over to you, Tyler. Thank you, Chris, for that introduction. As he uh, mentioned, uh, you're going to hear today about an automated ultrasonic scanning system um, for defect detection in real time uh, in composites during the cure cycle. Quick outline about what you're going to hear today. Um, we'll talk a little about a little bit about who I am, uh, the challenge and objective of the project, um, give some history of the technology, how we got to where we're at today, um, some examples of success, um, provide a summary, its impact and commercialization options, uh, with, finish with a tutorial or demonstration, and then a uh, question and answer session. So a little about me, um, I'm a materials research engineer at NASA Langley. Um, I have been in that position since uh, 2018. Um, my research has been focused on the manufacturing and process monitoring of advanced aerospace composite structures. Um, had projects within the aeronautics as well as uh, the space technology uh, mission directorates. Um, prior to this, I was already on site at NASA Langley as a graduate research assistant with the National Institute of Aerospace, um, and I finished my PhD from NC State in 2017. Uh, the photo you see on the right is from the Apollo, or the 50th anniversary of the Apollo moon landing. Um, NASA had a technology day on the Washington Mall. I was able to actually showcase uh, some of uh, my work during that event and then later that night they had a presentation um, and what you're actually seeing um, in the background is a um, pr projection of the Saturn V rocket um, onto the Washington Monument. Um, as many of you here know, um, composite materials offer many advantages to airspace applications. Um, they have higher strength to weight ratio, um, increased uh, fatigue properties. Um, as, however, um, defects such as porosity occur during the manufacturing of composites, um, and that includes during the cure cycle. And that's actually what you're going to hear about today is the cure cycle step in the manufacturing process. Um, we have process models that can predict these cure defects, um, an example being the cure defects process model that was developed during the advanced composites project. Um, however, there, uh, what we found is there's no direct validation of porosity during cure. Um, current validation methods include um, resin pressure sensors during cure, as well as uh, inspection or microscopy after cure. Um, and that's actually what you're seeing in the images in the bottom right are optical micrographs of um, three different locations within a laminate, um, and these dark areas here are void, so this is a laminate with very, very high porosity. Um, the optical micrograph in the center is a very well consolidated laminate um, with very low porosity, and then the optical micrograph on the left is something in between, so you still see voids, however, they're not nearly as severe as the optical micrograph on the right. 
the uh, objective of our project was to uh, develop a system to perform porosity detection, localization, and quantification uh, during cure in both an oven as well as an autoclave, um, and then compare those inspection results to uh, the process model. Um, that was the original question that started uh, started this work. However, what we found as we um, as we did this research is that the system is capable of doing a lot more. Um, so you get you uh, um, acquire a real time knowledge of um, porosity content and location um, in your part during cure and you could then use that to um, for example um, control your processing parameters based on um, uh, those measurements as well as a few other things and we're actually going to talk about that later on in the presentation about uh, about the impact of, on the system um, but then a question we always want to ask is why is this hard so why is this is uh, this system hard to develop um, so first and foremost they you have uh, limited accessibility to the composite part um, while it while it's being cured. If you look at the figure on the right, um, you have an autoclave. Um, the composite part is inside this vacuum bag. Um, it's uh, in contact with the tool plate. There is material such as breather cloth and release film that all make access to the composite difficult. You definitely don't have line of sight, um, and it's inside an autoclave, so you already are, um, have limited access um, because of that. Um, the defects themselves are very small, so porosity feature size can be on the order of microns. Um, and then the autoclave is a harsh environment, so you have elevated temperature that's required to compute required to cure the composite um, as well as pressure so anything you send into the autoclave actually has to go through um, bulkhead fittings to uh, maintain the pressure of the autoclave um, and quite simply commercial off-the-shelf inspection systems cannot operate in this uh, in this environment a little history about the system. So there were uh, two technologies that came uh, prior to the one you're hearing about today. Uh, both were focused on a guided wave-based cure process monitoring. Uh, the first had static piezoelectric transducers that were mounted uh, to what we called a uh, smart call plate. Uh, the second system was similar. Um, it used piezoelectric actuation, um, but the sensing mechanism was an optical fiber uh, with fiber brag gratings or phase shifted fiber brag gratings. And then the system you're hearing about today um, incorporated a mobile piezoelectric transducer. So the transducer actually moves around uh, during the cure cycle. And what that allows for is defect detection, localization, and quantification in real time in situ during cure. Um, in addition to defect detection, which is what you're going to hear a lot about today, um, but the system also provides very high spatial resolution cure monitoring. Um, the experiments that we were doing had a one millimeter by one millimeter per pixel resolution. Um, it could actually be even um, um, higher resolution than that. Um, the system is deployable to existing production lines. Um, so it is very, very scalable from R&D all the way to, uh, to industry. And a key feature is that no change is required to your current part design. Um, so the inspection system can work uh, without having to go back in and, um, and redesign your part. So our approach, um, we had a few uh, key design parameters that we were working with. So our um, raster scanner had a maximum desired operating temperature of 100F or 38C. Um, so we knew right out of the gate that we knew uh, that we were going to have to do cooling of those of those components. Uh, we wanted to make sure that the system did not affect the curing of the composite. Um, as well as uh, making sure that the system uh, could answer the original question, which was porosity detection, localization, and quantification uh, during cure. Uh, some additional challenges or design parameters was that the autoclave is pressurized. Um, so anything that we were sending into the autoclave had to go through, uh, through bulkhead fittings. Uh, we were spatially constrained in the autoclave, um, as well as we wanted to maintain an adequate scan area. Um, the, in the current embodiment of the system, we can do 7 inches by 18 inches. 
um, as well as uh, the ability to do cure monitoring with that extremely high uh, spatial resolution. Uh, the image that you are seeing in the bottom right is a um, um, view of our system and how it was operating. So our scanner is enclosed into a unsealed cooling container. Uh, the transducer that's actually doing the inspection is out in the autoclave um, and the motion is controlled um, from the raster scanner that's inside the inside the container and when the temperature inside the container um, gets to a predetermined temperature um, it sends a signal to the solenoid valve which opens um, at which point a liquid nitrogen tank, which is always at a higher pressure um, than the autoclave, would then um, send LN2 through the hose. By the time it actually gets to the container, it's, it's gaseous, and so you wind up with cold nitrogen gas inside the container and hot nitrogen gas inside the autoclave. We began with testing in an oven for vacuum bag only or um, out of autoclave composite materials and then transitioned the system to an autoclave. That is what you are seeing in the upper right is a picture of our system in an autoclave. Um, the scanner is housed inside the uh, cooling enclosure. Um, the LN2 that we talked a little bit about on the previous slide is delivered through this hose from a tank external to the autoclave. Um, the motion of the transducer is um, controlled uh, using a bellow system on the side of the enclosure that allows for side-to-side -side and front-to-back motion. And the ultrasonic transducer is high temperature, um, so it is, allow is able to operate at the cure temperature of the composite. Um, the question you may be asking is, well, where is the composite material in all of this? Um, it is actually vacuum bagged to the underside of the tool plate. Um, there are other orientations possible. It can be um, flipped over and so the composite being on top. Um, but in our particular system, it was uh, we, we had the composite underneath. And that's what you're seeing here in the bottom right is kind of a side view cutaway of how the, uh, the system operates. Um, for those that might not be familiar with how ultrasound works, is you have an ultrasonic transducer that emits a wave that then travels through the tool plate into the composite um, and that same transducer measures those, uh, those reflections at which point um, the transducer moves side to side and front to back and those reflections ultimately reveal the internal structure of the, of the composite panel. So some early successes from oven testing. We began with uh, intentionally embedded um, hollow glass microspheres um, that were emulating um, porosity. Uh, beginning with the image on the left, this is a top view where you see three distinct areas of porosity. Um, and then the image directly beside it is a cross section view. Uh, so this is the tool plate composite interface uh, this is the composite um, vacuum bag interface, and then all of the reflections between are coming from within the composite. And so you see this first area of porosity between plies 6 and 7, uh, this second area of porosity between um, 12 and 13, and then this third area between plies 18 and 19. Um, after doing these intentionally embedded um, experiments, we moved on to processing induced porosity, where we drove varying levels of porosity within the composite uh, using um, uneven pressure. Um, this is again a top view of the laminate, and the color scheme here is such that uh, the red color indicates uh, low porosity and the blue color indicates high porosity. Uh, the key result um, in this, uh, from these testing was that we demonstrated defect detection and localization both in plane as well as through thickness uh, during the cure cycle. So all of the images that you see above were measured at the highest uh, cure temperature uh, for, the, for the composites. 
After finishing testing in the um, oven, we transition to autoclave, and I'm going to talk about these figures um, in clockwise fashion. Uh, the first figure you see here is our composite panel, a simple photograph prior to cure. Um, it is a tapered laminate such that we have 32 plies in the center of the panel. Um, it is eight plies thick at the edge of the panel, and then the thickness is changed through ply drops um, from the center to the center to the edge. Uh, the panel is symmetric, so we actually are only scanning one half um, of the uh, of the panel and a small slice directly in the uh, in the center. So all of the image that you, images that you will see on previous or on future slides will be from from this scan area. Uh, the image on uh, the top right is of our um, part thermocouples, so uh, we have thermocouples measuring part temperature um, as well as autoclave temperature, temperature of the motors, temperature inside the, um, inside the enclosure, so we are very well instrumented as far as, uh, as, far as temperature goes. Uh, the cure cycle here, as you can see, is a we have a 30-minute B-stage hold uh, with a two-hour um, uh, full cure at 170. C. Uh, the photo in the bottom right is a cutaway or cross-section view of the system uh, in a little bit more detail. So we have our ultrasonic transducer. Um, below there we have a, um, a flat tool plate at which point we then have our tapered laminate um, again showing where we are thicker in the center and thinner near the near the edge um, and then a flat call plate so the call plate um, uh, initially is um, is initially is flat at the beginning of the cure cycle um, but due to pressure um, that is applied during cure um, the call plate actually bends um, and causes uneven pressure across the across the composite panel. So we have high pressure out near the edge of the call plate, a low pressure regime at the at end of the ply drops, um, a transition zone where the pressure is again high, and then in the center of the panel, uh, the pr pressure is reduced um, uh, uh, as well. The ultrasonic transducer, as mentioned before, um, sends, uh, sends the waves through the tool plate into the composite and then me measures those reflections, and then it moves side to side and front to back throughout the, throughout the cure cycle. Some results. So we were taking um, scans um, about every five minutes throughout the entire six-hour cure cycle. Um, our scan area, we already saw where that was at on the previous slide, but it was an area of 406 by 13 millimeters, and we had a resolution of one millimeter by one millimeter per pixel. Um, the results um, that you're seeing on the right are specifically the amplitude of the reflections from the composite call plate interface. Um, that's actually not as important as, as long as you understand that this is operating on the premise that porosity increases attenuation of the wave and such that a lower amplitude or a black color here indicates increased porosity. Um, and the key result is that we observed high porosity at the expected locations. Um, and those were near the end of the ply drops in the middle of the panel. Um, if you specifically look at uh, scan 20, it's enlarged here. Uh, scan 20 was taken 130 minutes into the cure cycle at, when the composite was at 122 degrees Celsius. So the resin was still in the liquid state and it's um, during the second ramp of the cure cycle. Um, moving, starting out at the call plate edge, uh, we have low porosity as indicated by the increased amplitude. Um, at the end of the ply drops, uh, we have high porosity indicated by the low measured amplitude. Um, in this transition regime, we have low porosity again, as indicated by higher amplitudes. And then in the center of the panel, uh, we have uh, moderate to high porosity um, indicated by the decreased amplitude. Putting this all together, 
we uh, started with a uh, simulation of our porosity from the physics-based process model. That's what you're seeing here, or cutaways or cross-section views of the, of the predicted porosity. Uh, we can then compare that to our in-situ inspections. Um, so we ta are taking uh, those inspections throughout the entire cure cycle. The images you're seeing here are a cross-section view or a B, uh, B scan um, at, every, at every stage. If we pull out uh, the specific scan that corresponds to the same time um, as the uh, single image of the, of the process model and put those side to side, um, I'll explain exactly what you're seeing here and then we'll talk about um, how, they, how they compare. Um, so first First off, this, uh, this reflection here is from the front wall or the tool plate composite interface. Um, this reflection here is the um, back wall or the composite call plate interface. Um, now if we line these two up, if we start at the edge of the panel or near the call plate edge, you see low porosity predicted from the uh, process model. Uh, you compare that to our um, inspections and we're seeing high amplitude indicating low porosity at this same location. Uh, near the end of the ply drops, there is this high porosity region. Uh, we again are seeing that same region in our in, in situ inspections from the decreased amplitude. Um, in this transition regime, there is a low porosity. Again, we're seeing this uh, in our inspections. And then at the center of the panel, there's moderate 2 to 3% porosity. And again, we're picking that up uh, with our in situ inspection, which is very good that we're even able to detect even low amounts of, uh, low amounts of porosity. So in addition to these cross-section or through thickness views, uh, you've already seen uh, some of the top views are referred to as a, uh, a C-scan. Um, anytime you develop a new system, you need to have some type of validation. So we had two ways to do that. Um, so the first is post-cure um, immersion uh, UT, um, very well understood. Um, from a completely different system. And if you look inside this scan area, you can see that we're seeing um, almost uh, more identical trends um, in the data um, post-cure using another system compared to uh, the measurements that we were taking during the cure cycle. This particular image is when the resin is in the, uh, in the liquid state. Um, and then next we had optical micrographs for direct observation of the porosity post cure. Um, if you look at this optical micrograph, this is from the bottom of the, or the end of the apply drops, and we're seeing very, very high porosity as indicated by these voids in the, um, in the optical micrographs. Um, then at the beginning of the ply drop region, we see a very well consolidated low porosity laminate, just as we uh, have seen in our inspections. And then in the center of the panel, uh, we're seeing moderate levels of porosity that is also detected in our, um, in our inspection. Um, we'll point out that these uh, specific my optical micrographs are from a uh, previous panel with um, identical conditions, so identical layup, geometry, call plate thickness and cure cycle um, optical micrographs for, from speci this specific panel will be taken once we return to on-site work um, at Langley after um, uh, COVID-19 uh, passes. Uh, in summary, uh, we developed a system that performs defect detection, localization, and quantification during cure, and it can operate in an oven or an autoclave. It features high spatial resolution cure monitoring of resin state as well as material properties, and that's in addition to the defect detection capability. Um, it's scalable from R&D all the way to existing production lines, and a key feature is that there would be no change required to current part design or process processing and only very limited changes to the processing equipment. Um, so a few bulkhead fittings in the side of your autoclave to pass everything in um, and this, uh, this system can, uh, can work with your existing composite structures. 
uh, the impact is you wind up with a uh, real-time knowledge of porosity or any other defect. We've talked mostly about porosity today. Um, it's location and quantity during cure. Um, you could use this to validate process models like we've done, or you could validate your processing parameters during certification. Um, you could also use it to control your processing parameters uh, during the cure cycle based on these real-time measurements. Uh, so the case study for that would be, let's say that 2% porosity is an acceptable level in your part. Um, you're measuring 3% porosity at the end of the B stage hold. You could decide to um, either extend the B stage hold or increase the pressure of your autoclave uh, to alleviate or reduce the pressure or I'm sorry, reduce the um, porosity in your part down to that acceptable level and prevent having to uh, scrap that part or repair that part. Um, ultimately, all these uh, result in a more efficient process development, a shortened certification time, a reduction in off-spec parts, and um, combined for uh, increased production throughput. So some commercialization uh, applications include aircraft, launch vehicles, uh, satellites, automotive, wind turbine blades. Really any time that you have structural composites that are cured in an oven or autoclave, the system would be uh, um, applicable. And the users are also as broad. So it could be OEMs, tier one or two suppliers. Um, an inspection equipment manufacturer may want to license it and then resell it. Um, and then it could be other OGAs, universities, or research labs. So really a broad, um, broad base of people that may want to uh, use this technology. So a quick um, demonstration of what this looks like um, while the experiment is going on. Um, so it's a four monitor system. Uh, on screen one, we have a live video of the scanner operating inside the enclosure. The reason the video is uh, fairly fuzzy is this is, you're looking through a very thick sheet of glass in the side of the, or the front of the autoclave. And what you're seeing out here is the transducer um, moving um, and performing, uh, performing the inspection. On screen two, uh, we have our ultrasound measurements, A, B, and uh, C scans uh, in real time. Uh, so you're not requiring post-processing um, afterwards. Everything is processed in real time. Uh, screen three are your temperature monitoring, and we look at uh, the scanning motors, the enclosure, autoclave temperatures, composite panel, um, measurements throughout the for multiple uh, locations of your of your process and then on screen four it contains all of your autoclave controls so this is how you control the autoclave temperature uh, the pressure the vacuum um, that's how you actually set the cure cycle is through the on, is all on screen four uh, the takeaway is that this um, provides visual real-time feedback on all aspects of your um, all aspects of your processing this was uh, definitely not a one-person project, so I want to uh, specifically thank Frank, Hoy, Sean, Eric, Jeff, Jamie, Brian, Tom, Bryce, Ken, Abiel, Joey, and Patrick uh, for their help on um, all aspects of, uh, of this project. Uh, this would not have been possible with, uh, without your help. Um, as well as the Technology Transfer Office for, um, for hosting uh, this webinar. Thank you, Sean, Kim, and Chris. And at this point, uh, we will stop and uh, take questions.